Now, this is something that I think is absolutely incredible, and I wanted to share it with you. I read about it and wanted to find out more. It's all about an early trial of 25 participants who... Ha now, this has shown that a cancer jab has lowered the risk of relapse in 100% of the patients. So that is the cancer actually returning. And that is the big deal with cancer. They managed to remove it, and then, unfortunately, there are some cells that are dormant that remain hidden, and they don't manage to catch them all, which is why often the cancer occurs. Secondary cancer is usually the thing that kills people because it goes all over the body or to different parts, and then it's difficult to uh, try and get rid of. Now, all of those who took part in the study had their tumours surgically removed, but after testing still had cancer markers present in their blood. So this is that secondary potential for cancer to spread. This jab is designed to help with the most deadly cancers, including that of pancreatic cancer and colon cancer. And all this as a woman who received the world's first breast cancer vaccine back in 2021 says that she has felt wonderful ever since. So that's two jabs, one for the breast cancer, and the other one to stop secondary cancers returning. So with scientists claiming that they're on track to get a jab on the market within five years, this is incredible news. Let's uh, discuss this with virologist and professor of molecular oncology at the University of Warwick, Professor Lawrence Young. Now, Lawrence, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it sounds phenomenal. Something for people who have a certain type of cancer, which is breast cancer, which is ultimately like a vaccine, and something for people who have already had the cancer. With, let's talk about the, should we start with the, the jab, which sort of protects people from recurring cancers. Is that jab specifically for certain types of cancer, or is that for all types of cancer, or is that an impossible ask? I think it's, it's a bit of an impossible ask. Having said that, we're seeing this revolution in new ways of mm. stimulating the body's immune system to fight cancer. That particular trial targets a change that occurs quite commonly in a number of different cancers during the development of the tumour, particularly in colorectal cancer and pancreatic cancer, which has a terrible terrible sort of very, very poor survival. So what we're seeing in these 25 patients, it's early days, small number of patients. And as you said earlier, Nana, that what happens, of course, is even after you've had your tumor removed, there are always a few tumor cells hanging around. And that's why often patients have chemotherapy, radiotherapy after having surgery. But what this latest data suggests is that you can really boost the body's immune system to fight the cancer cells and prevent them from recurring. And that's a major, major benefit mm -hmm. and also means that you don't, won't necessarily have to give patients all those horrible, nasty chemotherapeutic drugs in the future. Well, well that's what I was going to ask. And what about people um, with, certain, say, someone with like an autoimmune condition, um, can they, would that jab be suitable for them as well? Certainly the certain types that you wear, for example, lupus, where you have cytokine storms and things like that. Will a jab like that be effective for patients like that? And are they looking at that? Yes, they are, because of course, what you've got to be, what you've always got to balance when you're stimulating the body's immune system is the positive side from the negative side. So this is a vaccine, but it's a therapeutic vaccine for cancer. The issue is if you vaccinate and stimulate an immune response, you want to be able to control that immune response so it doesn't fight the rest of your body, it only fights the cancer cells. So you have to target. And what, what's interesting with these types of, of, of vaccines is they're very specific and will only target the cancer cells and not cause any damage in terms of autoimmune community any, anywhere else. But they're still in development. It's still early days. The exciting thing, however, is that we're seeing so many of these new types of vaccines as we learn more about the body's immune system. And some of it's based on the development of new vaccines that have been speeded up because of COVID, like the mRNA vaccine, for instance, is a very nice trial that's just been published looking at using mRNA vaccines for patients with advanced melanoma. And that, again, is looking very, very exciting. So again, post-surgery, a boost to the body's immune system to prevent the tumour from recurring. That's what I was going to ask you next, actually, whether the, uh, the mRNA vaccines, was, there's been a lot of controversy about them. People, you know, saying, oh, they, they continue to make the spike protein and things like that. I mean, I don't know what the long-term effect of an mRNA vaccine is, but I was going to ask you whether that um, has become one of the things that has helped to push this forward. Do you think that this is really a huge game changer now with the way we deal with cancer? Yeah, it's beginning to be. And this yeah. revolution has taken place over a number of years. In 2018, the Nobel Prize for Medicine was awarded to, to two scientists who developed new approaches to unleashing the body's immune response against cancer by blocking some of the negative regulators of the body's immune system. And if you add those with cancer vaccines, we're starting to see some really exciting, exciting developments now. And some of that treatment is becoming standard now. So these immune 
approaches, so-called immune checkpoint inhibitors, are being used as a standard for treating patients with certain cancers like kidney cancer and melanoma, the most aggressive form of skin cancer. So what we can see is this way of adding into the system, if you like, of all the different therapies we use, something that really is going to be much more effective and yeah. prevent cancer from recurring. The big question is, could you move this into the preventive? Could you actually start to give people some of these vaccines in high risk groups to prevent them developing cancer for those women for instance with inherited predisposition to breast cancer mm. would it be possible to use some of these vaccines to prevent them developing the cancer in the first it would place be really, that's really exciting really exciting and, and as i understand it a couple of years time it potentially could be out there in the market if people want to find out from the study listen i've got about literally 10 seconds lawrence do you know if uh, where people could find out more about this study if there is anywhere at the moment yeah, the, the best way to find out is just go to the websites of the different companies. If you if you put a search in and look at some of the newspapers that have published the information, mm. you'll see the name of the company. If you go into the company, you'll find all the data on the early trials of these new approaches. Thank you, Lawrence. Really good to talk to you. That's Professor Lawrence Young. He's there uh, in oncology at the University of Warwick. I'll see if I can get you some of that, those details as well.